The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had left them, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and God will glorify him at once. My children, I will be with you only a little while longer. I give you a new commandment to love one another as I have loved you, so that also you should love one another. This is how all will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Thank you, Deacon Tony, for proclaiming the gospel. Thank you, Frank, not only for proclaiming God's word, but for your immense patience with me. Frank has uh, offered to be a lector for quite some time, and I kept dropping the ball on getting his name to the lecture scheduler. So thank you for sharing your gift despite those uh, mistakes and trials along the way. We're very human, aren't we? Not you, of course, me. We're all very human, and like the apostles that Jesus trained for three years and commissioned to carry on the sharing of the gospel, the good news, they struggled in many ways while Jesus was with them in the flesh and even afterwards. But they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were able to glorify God to the extent that they opened themselves up to the glory of Jesus Christ in them. That's one of glory, that's one of those theological words that even as a priest I've struggled with at times. But I love the way that Father Lambert articulates what it is to glorify God. He says it's a lot like a child wanting to make a parent proud. We glorify God by the way that we make God proud of us. We give praise and glory to God the closer we live our lives with him. But in our humanity, we drop the ball a lot of times. And so we need to turn back to the one who lifts us There's a lot of newness going on in the readings this weekend. Jesus says, I give you a new commandment. Love one another. What's new about that? The example that Jesus gives us of how we are to love one another. As I have loved you, so you also should love one another. No matter what our vocation in the church, in our world, in our lives, no matter what our particular gifts and talents and limitations may be, God is calling each of us in our own way to love one another as Christ loves us. In the book of Revelation, we hear John speak of a new heaven and a new earth. 
The old heaven, the former heaven and earth have passed away and the sea was no more. We can be so caught up in wanting to do things the way that we're familiar with that we can, at times, if we're honest, be close to God doing something new in our lives. But he wants to do something new because he wants to help keep us moving forward, not stagnating, not looking just towards the past, although the past can at times help to ground us in our faith and in Christ himself, but to allow God to continue moving us forward even if at times it might be three steps forward and two steps back, God helps us to be open to something new. And Paul and Barnabas embrace that three steps forward, two steps back in a particular way in our first reading. It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Of God. I've shared with you before how so often in my life and perhaps in yours, I keep trying to look for that point where things are at an even keel and everything's going peacefully and swimmingly well. I don't know if you found it yet, but I haven't. That's not always the way that life is meant to go. In fact, if the one that we follow, Jesus Christ, learned obedience through his hardships, through his suffering, and showed how to love one another by the sacrificial love he poured out on the cross, then we can expect to endure hardships along the way. And if we expect that, sometimes that helps us to even find peace in those times of hardship. Whether it's something a little difficult, like getting stranded in Ireland for eight extra days, I think I can handle that, or something much more serious the violence in our world, the hatred among people in our own country, the lack of compassion and willingness to listen and understand, listen to and understand one another. Those hardships are real. And the more we appreciate that others are going through hardships just as much and oftentimes more than we are. The more that we're able to do that, the more we're able to understand one another, to be patient with one another, and actually to help one another to see what God is doing new in our lives. As Paul and Barnabas retraced their steps on their first missionary trip, revisiting the communities that they had shared the Christian faith with, reassuring them. Why did they need reassuring so soon after they were formed? They too experienced hardships. I'm sure that's why Paul and Barnabas shared about their own hardships. But then they came back to Antioch where they began their mission where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had now accomplished. What did they do when they returned home? They didn't go running for their comfortable bed like I did. They gathered together the church. When they arrived, they called the church together and reported all that God had done with them. We need one another in the body of Christ, the church. 
This is where my vocation was born and nourished, in parish life. This is where our faith is strengthened day in and day out, on good days when we rejoice and on difficult days when we are enduring hardships. We need one another. And so as Christ calls us to glorify God with our own lives like he does, may we love one another in that same sacrificial love that gives us strength from Christ so often through our sisters and brothers of faith in the church. We are stronger as we stand together, not just because of strength in numbers, but because it is together that we are united in that body of Christ and more able to experience that reassurance when we are struggling and that shared joy that is multiplied when we rejoice with one another.